Hello everyone, my name is Jamin. Thanks so much for visiting my channel. In this video, I have an Acer Swift 3, the SF31456 series. I'm going to show you how to get inside, access your storage. So first thing, power down your computer the correct way. Make sure it's off and unplugged from your charger. We're then going to flip your computer over to access the bottom case screws. After removing these nine screws, you're going to take a small, flat, preferably plastic pry tool, and I say plastic because it'll scratch your computer far less than a metal one will, and we're going to go all the way around the seam of your bottom case and pry it off from the rest of your computer. It's generally easier to start back here near one of the two hinge assemblies. Go nice and slow and careful but firm. Don't put the pry tool too far in. You could damage some internal components, keep it on the edge, and if you get stuck at a certain spot, just leave it. Go to the other side and continue in the other direction. Now this bottom case was very tight. It was a little bit of a pain and make sure that you pry it off from out back here too near the hinges. After you get the bottom case off, this is what you're looking at for the inside of your computer. Now as a general computer repair side note, whenever I'm working on a computer in my shop, it's sitting on an anti-static mat. Either that or an anti-static bracelet are great ideas to avoid damaging anything in your computer when you're working on it. If you would like any help with tools or supplies for your computer project, as well as any of the replacement or upgrade parts for this specific model computer, there'll be a link above, also below in the description, and that will be a list of all those tools and supplies that I use in my shop, as well as this computer model's replacement parts and upgrade parts. Now before I touch anything in a computer, I always either remove or at least unplug my battery. A computer is safest to work on when as little power as possible is running through it. This is your battery right down here. It's held in by these two screws and plugs into the motherboard right here. To unplug the battery, there's a piece of black tape here over the plug, remove that carefully. And as with any wires or cables in a computer, try not to pull on the actual wires if at all possible. They can be damaged. Uh, sometimes they can come out of the plug. So just manipulate the plug if at all possible. In this case, it's easy. There's a grip on either side of that white plug. You can use your fingernails or a pry tool to wiggle that out of that port. Okay, so now that the battery has been removed, or again, at least unplugged, it's safe to proceed deeper into the computer. You have your main storage device here. This is a 2.5 inch SATA hard drive in most of your computer's stock. It's held in by these four screws. And when you undo those four screws, that releases the hard drive caddy. To get the hard drive out of the caddy, there will be two screws on this long side and two screws on the other long side. That will release the hard drive from the caddy. You can also unplug it here from the motherboard or you can unplug it here from the motherboard. The owner's manual on this model computer says that it supports up to a one terabyte hard drive in this SATA port here. So below in the description in that link I told you about with all of the replacement and upgrade parts for this model computer, I will have a 500 gigabyte hard drive replacement and I will have a one terabyte hard drive upgrade if you want help finding those. I will also include two solid state drives. They do make solid state drives that fit a 2.5 inch SATA casing like this. Uh, solid state drives, if you don't know, they're much faster and they break less. So I will also include in that list a 500 gigabyte solid state drive that will fit in this port for a nice upgrade. And I will include a one terabyte solid state drive if you're looking to fully upgrade this storage area here. On the right side of the screen, you'll notice here, this is a solid state drive M.2 port here. It'll screw down here, or it'll screw down here. So you're looking at a 2280 or a 2230 solid state drive will fit this port right there. This computer takes up to Gen 3 solid state drives. So in that list, I will also include a 256 gigabyte uh, M.2 NVMe drive for this port. And then I will include a 512 gigabyte solid state drive for this port as well. Just a little piece of advice, what a lot of people tend to do when they have options like this of two storage ports is they tend to buy a smaller solid state drive for this port, maybe a 256, uh, and they put the operating system on that drive so that the computer runs as quickly as possible. And then they'll get a larger, maybe one terabyte hard drive here, and they'll use that for more long-term storage 
uh, that's kind of the most efficient use of, of money to spend a little bit on a nice solid state drive that's limited in size for the operating system and then to spend uh, a little bit on a large hard drive. If you would like to understand the difference between hard drives and solid state drives, as well as the difference between various kinds of solid state drives, there will be a video link above, also below in the description. That'll be kind of an intro tutorial on how these various storage devices differ from each other if you guys want more um, education that way. One additional word of caution here with this ribbon cable clip, these connectors are very fragile. Anywhere you see these on a computer motherboard, over here there's one, uh, over here there's a small one. So be very careful when operating these. That black clip right there, that opens and shuts kind of like a book cover. Um, it opens from this bottom section here near the ribbon cable, and the hinges, if you will, are up here on top. So the way to operate that is to take a small, very, very flat pry tool, slide it from this direction, from the bottom, underneath the black clip, and then gently pry it up, pop that up like a book cover to release the ribbon cable. Uh, if you do break those black clips, they're very hard to find replacements for. You may end up having to replace the motherboard if you break that clip. So a big word of caution when operating those. And I guess the last thing to shout out about this kind of operation, if you are installing a new storage device, you may need to install an operating system onto it afterwards in order to use your computer. If you would like help with that, I will have two links below in the description. One will show you how to install Windows 10 onto an Acer laptop. The other will show you how to install Windows 11. But that's the end of this video, how to get inside your Swift 3 and access your storage. Thanks again so much for watching. Uh, please remember to like and share if this helped you out, if you think it can help someone else out. And feel free to subscribe if you enjoy DIY computer content like this, or if you just want to keep me on hand to answer any of your future computer questions. I do try to answer all questions throughout my channel at least a couple times a day. Also, feel free to check out the related link section below in the description. From time to time, I do try to add things in there that I think will help you uh, with your general computer life, make it more productive, more enjoyable. So thanks again for watching, everyone. I look forward to seeing you on my next video.